Hello everyone, it's Freddie Mac, your ham radio crusader, and I'm back with another video. But I'm on the wrong channel. That's right, Jason Johnston over at Ham Radio 2.0 asked me to make a video and introduce myself to the rest of you. Well, it's like I said, I'm Freddie Mac. My real name's Freddie McGuire. A lot of folks call me Fred. Freddie Mac kind of stuck. Been here forever since, so... I have been in law enforcement the last 33 years, and I am retiring. I got my ham ticket in 1998, but I had a family to raise, several, well, five kids, and now I have about 10 plus uh, grandkids, 10 grandkids, I've got some honoraries in there. But nonetheless, I'm retiring in like 32 days, and I'm making a crusade to get back to ham radio and make a contribution. I love ham radio. I got away from it for a while, not so intense as I used to be because eh, it costs a lot of money sometimes. Sometimes it takes a lot of time, and I just couldn't sacrifice it all with career and family. So I let it take a back seat for a while, but guess what? I'm making my way back. 32 more days, we're going to hit the ground running. I want to thank Jason Johnston, KC5HWB, Ham Radio 2.0, for this opportunity. Thank you. Nonetheless, I want to talk to you today about All Star. I'm about to start a series of videos from beginning to finish about how to build your own home All Star node. And you can do it out of a two-way radio or out of a, a, a Raspberry Pi with a Pi Hat board on it. That's a radio uh, board. And I'm going to walk you through all of that here in just a little while. But All Star is what's bringing me back more than anything. Uh, I, don't get me wrong, I enjoy the digital modes. I truly do. have a lot of fun with that. Analog's my first love. And All Star could bring you back to that. Back in the day, we dabbled with Echo Link, our ham radio club did. And it wasn't bad, but it was... The sound quality was kind of poor. And the the constant announcements and folks from china and other countries that didn't speak english connecting up and manipulating airtime got to be a big hassle and we just kind of let it go all star comes along i don't know how long ago long enough and makes everything more convenient the sound quality is awesome the feature set is amazing and the control that you have over your own node is is outstanding it's a uh, second to none in my opinion but nonetheless, uh, in this series of videos that's to come, we will cover that. But I want to give you some basic components of things that you may need or will need if you want to build your home node out of a mobile radio. Now, I'm going to show you some of the basic components that you need to build your own home all-star node. I like to start with my favorite radio currently. is the TYT TH9000D. It's a simple little radio, single band. This one is VHF. I got a really good deal on it used. I've already tested it. It is working. You can also use, and there's tons of these laying around the internet, all over eBay, the Motorola Radius GM300 or the MaxTrack 300. I think sometimes they're just called MaxTrack. But as long as they've got that 16-pin accessory port in the back, But it usually has an accessory connector. Sometimes that looks a lot like this. As long as it's got a 16 pin and it's a functioning radio, you can, you can do several things. You can either build a cable like this one. And that cable fits right into the back of the, uh, of the radio. This 25, this DB 25 end will fit right into a, a, uh, DMK Engineering uh, Yuri XB sound fob. I'll show a picture of that here in just a moment. I have one, but it's actually in operation and I want to demonstrate my all-star node. So you can also go to repeaterbuilder.com and buy one of these little beautiful things. It's called a rim max track. It will also work on the GM300 and it plugs right into that 16 pin connector. The other end is a USB that plugs right into your Raspberry Pi. And you load your SD card up with All-Star OS, which we will cover in the coming videos. 
And once it boots up, it will talk to the sound card, which will talk to the radio and control it. So that's another option for a sound card. Scott Zimmerman makes these. These are stinking awesome. They're worth every penny. And they run around 50, 55 bucks, I think. You can also visit technobygeorge.com. I've covered him before. He makes this little beautiful thing. This is the ARA One Plus. He makes an ARA-1 and an ARA-1 Plus. This one has three lights on it, uh, one to detect COS, the other one for red PTT, and the green one is a heartbeat that blinks to let you know that it's communicating with the Raspberry Pi. It comes with these two little gems. This is the USB plug, goes into the, goes into the Raspberry Pi. This end plugs into here and goes to your custom made uh, interface cable. I have an Alinko cable here that would have to be rewired just a little bit for the uh, TYT, TH9000D. Uh, the reason I picked this now is because these little sound fobs are wired identical to the DMK Engineering uh, Uri X, but they're only $57.90. Where the Uri X is $119 for shipping, may include shipping, to any licensed ham. But, and they work really good. Don't get me wrong. They rock and roll, but these are a little cheaper. And, you know, I'm on a budget. Fixing to be retired. Fixed income and all. You'll need these sound cards. You'll need a radio. You'll need an interface cable. And you'll need a Raspberry Pi. Wow. Did we ever think this was going to be so hard to get this time in our lives? When COVID hit and created shortage after shortage, the silicone chip shortage really hit home because these things that we picked up for 35 bucks here and there without worrying about them ever being in stock disappeared. And now a Pi 4, one megabyte is almost a hundred bucks. I'm sorry, a gig of RAM. But if the Pi, the Pi 2, I'm sorry, the Pi 4, two, meg, two megabyte, two gigabytes of RAM are hundred bucks and more all over eBay. And dadgummit, that's a tough price to pay. I can also have a Pi 2. You can run an all-star node off a of Pi 2 but you want to run it with minimal resources because you can load up the extra extra modules of All-Star and a Pi 2 will start to struggle. It only has a half a gig of RAM as it is. So it's its processor is a little slower, so you don't really want to overload it too much. A Pi 3, I've got one uh, running a moat, running a node in uh, about 20 miles away and it's a Pi 3, and it does a DMR bridge with a DB switch. It's amazing. It works really good. Occasionally, i got to reboot it. I mean, it's just the nature of the beast. But I uh, recently got my hands on a couple of Pi 4s, and I'm starting to convert those out because I really want to put a workload on them, as it were. Once you get your all-star node up and running, and we will cover setting up the software. We will cover how to SSH into your all-star node. Pi, your Raspberry Pi where uh, ham VoIP runs. I only know how to set up ham VoIP version of All-Star. There is the ASL version of All-Star. And don't get me wrong, there's probably not a thing wrong with it. I've just never used it. I've seen it a few times, and I know it's really good if you're going to set up a radioless node on a server. But uh, ham VoIP is the one that I love because it's the one that I learned first, and I know its ins and outs, and I know the features I can set up. The beautiful thing about these is once you get them set up, you don't have to worry about them that much. My lights dimmed when I keyed up the radio. That's my all-star node. And I also have this little beauty. Let's switch back over here and take a look at the Shari Pi Hat U. This is an amazing uh, little device uh, invention for lack of a better word this is a Raspberry Pi 4 and it has on the uh, GPIU pins right on top let's say this uh, for instance if this top cover wasn't here there's a radio board that locks right into these GPIOs and you've got a wire in one wire for USB power 
That's why, that's why there's a plug in this USB hole. Uh, you wired it around and take it underneath. There's just two solder joints you have to make. Uh, not a big deal. Let's talk about how to control your all-star node once it's implemented. It has a built-in web server so that you can access through your browser an interface to view your settings and your node and see what its current state is and then you can log into it and control it. So let's go here and this 192.168.1.203 is my all-star node interface called Supermon. This is Supermon 2. Supermon stands for Super Monitor. But the first one that you set up is actually called Supermon. There's the current version. There's actually a version 7 now, I believe. And once you log in, it looks something like this. Now you've got control buttons up here. You can switch your node, your uh, different nodes. I have one public node, my 58176, on this particular setup. And this setup has two private nodes. Now, there's also Supermon 2. I've got it zoomed in right now for purposes of the video, but you can come across the top here and put in your own custom website links. I think Supermon has it as well, yeah. But Supermon 2 does as well. And we've got Supermon, we got Supermon 2, we've got to get uh, radios, sound card, interface cables. All Star can join you to the world. All Star is a wonderful way to keep in touch with a lot of folks and ham on and play radio. <laughs> it's great and it has a lot of awesome features for day-to-day -day use. But I'm the guy that's been in ham radio for a while. I'm not a I'm not a expert by any means. But if you want to do MCOM, by golly, you better learn some HF and you better have a nice prototype rig set up so that you can run your rig anywhere portable antenna portable power and be ready to go that's just the way i look at it i'm not there yet but i'm coming world i'm coming we'll cover a lot of things in these series of videos that's coming up i want to thank jason johnston ham radio 2.0 kc5 hwb for this opportunity to be on his channel and i hope you got something out of this video because i love all star i love amateur radio and I love my amateur radio friends, which is all y'all. Ham Radio Crusader is about a guy who's crusading himself back to ham radio. And I want to make a contribution to the hobby. So here I come, world. Here I come. This is KD5FMU, your ham radio crusader, signing off. Seven threes, ham on.